Hi, everyone. Okay, it is still August 4, 2021. Small landlords, mom and pop landlords, are folding all over. And I've received comments uh, from enough subscribers that don't really f understand what is happening. And what is happening is that we are becoming a nation of renters. This is deliberate. When I yeah, think about <clears throat> all of the moratorium extensions that have been uh, implemented, where landlords, well, they started to get rent again, and then that stopped. And then I, I, I see so many landlords who are actually selling to the wrong buyers because they are the buyers that are helping to make us a nation of renters. So I'm going to read this article, um, and it this is why we have uh, a new normal here in America. Uh, new normal is destroy the small landlord. That moratorium, <clears throat> the legislation that the CDC well, wrote and passed and signed to once again extend it to, what, the end of October, it is going to hurt more and more landlords. And then eventually, you know, it catches up with all of the tenants and they'll be put on the street. Okay, so I, I want you to hear um, just some broadcasts that I've chosen. Um, small landlords own just over half of the nation's rental homes. Now, two different stimulus bills have earmarked over 50 billion in rental relief, but much of it is not getting there because the process must start with tenants. The critical thing here is for these jurisdictions to really streamline what they're doing and make access to capital much easier for the residents and for the property owners. 15% of renter households, or 6.7 million, said they were behind on their rent, according to a recent census survey. More than a quarter say they have either slight or no confidence they can pay next month. As for the relief, 40% of rental owners who are owed back rent say they have not received the necessary paperwork from tenants to file for it. That according to the National Rental Housing Council. Now, 11% said they have already been forced to sell at least one of their properties. Marilyn Blackburn has been a landlord in Washington State for 20 years, but she said she's lost more than $12,000 in the last six months. It's just frustrating, and I think they're going to make it worse before it gets better by changing these rules and forcing us to keep tenants longer. So, time to get out. Blackburn says she's going to sell all of her nine properties, but the trouble with landlord selling is that in today's incredibly tight housing market, buyers will likely be the occupants, reducing the stock of desperately needed affordable rental housing. John? Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Reducing the stock of rental housing. More broadly, what are experts telling you about what this might do to landlord behavior overall? Does it change their math? on what it takes to get uh, these rental properties uh, profitable? Is, is it any easier to refinance as a landlord at a lower rate here? Uh, no, it's not easier for them, but actually what they're telling uh, them is that more landlords are going to start having much stricter guidelines for how they decide which tenants they could take. So it may become harder to become a tenant in a rental property because the landlords are going to be so careful about who they want to put into the home, wanting to make sure that they'll actually get that rent. So it's not only going to become less affordable to be a renter, it'll also be harder to qualify to be a renter, John. Wow. And with the debate still raging over the next COVID relief package, we take a look at another group getting squeezed by this pandemic, America's small business landlords. ABC's Trevor Alt shows us how many are struggling to pay their own bills as rent payments dry up. The coronavirus pandemic has upended our lives in countless ways, but the first of the month still comes calling at the same time, and rent is still due. I've been behind on all of them, so 
I'm always robbing Peter to pay Paul and sold anything that I've had that's worth selling to try to make ends meet. For nearly a year now, pandemic shutdowns have led to unprecedented job losses. Now more than 10 million Americans are unemployed, something real estate investor Andrew Lacey empathizes with. It becomes between paying rent that they technically aren't forced to pay right now and feeding their children. I, I understand what they're going to pick. I can't be mad at that. In January, more than 10 million people were estimated to be behind on rent and utilities. And since the start of the pandemic, more than $57 billion of rent and expenses have gone unpaid. I can't do anything about it. $3,800 is a lot of money to me. I have to borrow money from people. The CDC has taken extreme steps to protect renters, extending its moratorium on evictions until at least March. But that means the burden of those missed payments is frequently falling to the property owners, many of them struggling themselves. You know, my husband also lost his job. So you, it used to be a supplement income to, to, to our family, but now it, it is the main source of income. Many believe that property owners are wealthy, and there are certainly a number of billion-dollar enterprises that could withstand stretches of missed payments. Mom-and-pop landlords manage more than 22 million properties in the U.S., and they're counting on the narrow margins they make from rent payments in order to get by. The mom-and-pop segment has been hit especially hard. Um, you know, this is a group of individuals who have decided to, instead of putting their money in 401ks, they put it in real estate. I can see people thinking of it as binary, whereas the, the property owner is the monopoly guy and the tenant is uh, the guy who shines your shoes. And when it's a lot more of a graded scale. Everybody talks about the institutional class. It's a very small percentage of overall housing in this country. One of those mom and pop landlords is Tammy Mason. We have not received rent since March of 2020. While working a full-time job and caring for her young son who's distance learning at home, she and her sister have been renting out the home they inherited from their father to support their 80-year-old mother. In the past year, she says she's lost out on $25,000 in costs. The rent we received basically covered the day-to-day -day costs of owning a home, which is mortgage, utilities, insurance, property taxes, and any money left over was really to support and supplement my elderly mother's income. Right, so this wasn't some kind of cash cow operation for you guys where you were snatching up houses and renting them up. Yes, that is correct. There is a biased presumption that if you own a rental home, that you are by means considered wealthy. Rental housing groups say on average only 10% of rental income ends up in the pockets of landlords, with the first 90% going toward mortgages, taxes, and maintenance. If somebody misses that first month's rent, you're talking about, what, 8.3% of that profit going away if they miss the second month then you go into negative range. And small-time landlords are what the industry refers to as naturally occurring affordable housing. If they're unable to make their mortgage payments, then the bank could foreclose on their property. Unlike a big you know, commercial real estate company, I actually went to the bank and you know got these mortgages in my personal name. The bank could foreclose on my properties, and then they could also go after my primary residence, all my life savings, the latest COVID relief bill passed in December has earmarked $25 billion in rental relief, mostly going to renters to help make their payments, though Tammy says she's not eligible for those funds. The only option that we were eligible to, to consider was the mortgage forbearance. And Tammy and many of the landlords we talked to told us they don't view tenants who can't pay their rent as the enemy. What the issue will be is that we're not able to sell the home with a potential fair offer if it is renter occupied. You can't afford to keep it because you have renters there who aren't paying rent, but you also can't sell it to somebody else as long as somebody is still renting there. That is correct. She has no interest in kicking out families during a pandemic. She just doesn't want to be left footing the entire bill without government help. The Biden administration is trying to pass an addition. The Biden administration. So. Are you getting how this is a fabulous plan to literally destroy mom and pop landlords? Okay, there's a lot 
of videos on this. I recommended this video a while ago. These are um, homeowners that have an apartment in their basement. This is in um, New York City. And uh, pandemic, their renter, they can't evict. He won't pay. He's still working. He's one of those tenants that screw it up for everyone else. He's not paying them. And he apparently is making a lot of noise, and they've tried everything they possibly could to get him out. Eviction moratorium. Okay. There are tenants that can make life hell for the landlord as well as other tenants. Um, so I will link below to this video. How New York is destroying small landlords. Yeah, and some, it just, it breaks my heart. I have nowhere else to go. I don't know what to do. A local landlord turned to the troubleshooters desperate for help. The CDC just extended the moratorium that prevents landlords from evicting tenants who cannot pay their rent. It's meant to help Americans through the pandemic, but as News 4 troubleshooter April Molina reports, there have been unintended victims of the government's financial safety net. They've contacted him. He won't even respond because he has moved on and has left me with a $1,900 utility bill. $1,900 in utilities and $3,600 in overdue rent. Landlord Catherine Esposito says she's on the hook to pay it because one of her five tenants just moved out after living rent-free for months during the pandemic. They don't even respond to me. She tried to get him to apply for financial assistance through the Texas Rent Relief Program, but says he wouldn't even do that. Drop in income. Uh, Nobody's paying me rent. I'm trying to hang on to my properties. Esposito's financial situation has become more dire by the day because she has another renter in the same quadplex she says left her owing $7,200. And the family of five renting this house, also in rental arrears, she says they owe $17,000 in unpaid rent. Add to that, she's been paying their water bill. Why did you pay their water bill? Because I couldn't, I, three little girls. I can not see, you know, them being without any water. Esposito says it's not fair that tenants are getting a break while some landlords are going deeper into debt. I have a good job. I have been uh, delivering groceries, mowing yards. Real estate attorney Todd Taylor says there are ways to evict tenants even during a moratorium. If a lease is about to end, a landlord can choose not to renew, giving the tenant notice to vacate. Lease violations are also not protected by the moratorium. Okay, um, yeah, there are ways. Uh, don't renew a lease. Any kind of violation of the lease will get you evicted, regardless of the pandemic. Um, but, you know, look, there are an awful lot of good-sold landlords. So, you know, and... and but one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because there is this bias against the landlord, just like that woman said, who's um, helping out her mother. Um, so, yeah, there's this bias that, oh, wow, they have an awful lot of money. That's not true. Yeah, these presumptions that we make hurt, hurt people. So we've got to catch them. Now, institutional uh, investment firms, uh, pension funds that are buying up all of the properties, the corporate uh, uh, owner of apartment complexes, <clears throat> that's a different story. They're sitting pretty with an awful lot of money. There are so many Americans just like this woman who are not sitting pretty and not getting any rent can very well you know put these landlords into bankruptcy into selling um, if you have a good heart you end up paying water bills for your tenants that have children and
And unfortunately, yeah, the ones who have a good heart get screwed. So um, there's more and more. Um, here is a, a renter that tried to pay her rent with the stimulus check, and, and the landlord just refused to take it. Eviction paperwork is stacking up for Ronald Original. And here's another eviction notice. At this Shawnee apartment complex. I'm still behind on so many things. This four-year resident is here. without a job due to the pandemic. She applied to a federal stimulus program to help pay her rent, but she says the property manager won't accept it. He said it's too many strings attached. Well, what are the strings attached when you're getting free money? KMBC 9 Investigates reached out to the property manager, and we're waiting to hear back. We're definitely hearing a lot about um, people having difficulties with rental assistance applications. Um, Leaders you know, with the group Rent Zero Kansas say it is a problem playing out at apartment complexes all across Kansas. The Federal CARES Act money is there, but in Kansas right now, that federal money has to go to the landlord, not directly to the renter. Landlords can arbitrarily deny rental assistance for whatever reason they want with no justification. I'm in survival mode at this point. Reginald's know. hoping her landlord might have a change of heart soon. If you find yourself in a similar situation, we want to know about it. Email us at investigates. The other presumption is that, you know, all all tenants are just taking advantage of uh, the moratorium, just not paying rent, I guess, because they just don't want to pay rent. That's not true as well. So you finally get the assistance from government. You've lost your job during the pandemic. You go to pay rent, and the landlord won't accept it. You know, we are... Unfortunately, there's a lot of Americans who behave in ways that create a wider, darker nightmare that we are living. So, you know, here, listen to this man. Obviously, I, I don't like that. Um, I know they're trying to do it so that the rental funds can be approved and be distributed, but we've had applications that have been pending since April. This is the la landlord. Application, okay sitting pending since April. All right, this was just posted yesterday, August 3rd, and he's talking about now the moratorium again. He does not like it. Of course he doesn't. So, um, I want to read some of this article selling out America's local landlords moving in big investors. So this was just posted, I believe, uh, July 29. Local landlords are offloading their properties to cash-rich institutional investors, and America's real estate market may never be the same. It will not be the same. Nothing is coming back the way it was before. Uh, before the pandemic, boyhood, boyhood friends, Michael Morano, Richard Tyson, owned 96 rental units in their hometown of Rochester, New York. They offered accommodation to low-income tenants, many in the service industry, from rooming houses to single-family starter homes. Today, they're well on their way to liquidating their entire portfolio. Two-thirds of the units are already gone. The buyers, large investors with all cash offers. This is going on all over the country. Why? This is why a nation of renters. It's deliberate. Um... And what, what then happens, you know, to all of these tenants? Well, you'll hear. Um, it broke my heart to sell 15 single-family homes to just one out-of-state big corporate investor. Well, you didn't have to do it if it broke your heart. 
um, many of America's landlords have gone a year and a half without being paid by tenants. Now, I shouldn't say uh, that he didn't have to do it. He may very well have had to do it. So I'm pulling back my presumption, and I'm admitting it. They come automatically. Got to catch them, admit it. Um, but um, these corporate investors are offering uh, offering to buy their properties at much higher market uh, prices. So I think it would be hard for anybody to turn down what they could not get, you know, from ordinary Americans. I understand that is hard. But, you know, again, it, it's just, it's an amazing shit show we're in. And it just keeps getting, you know, just murkier and murkier every friggin' day. So many of America's landlords have gone a year and a half without being paid by tenants. The owners have been waiting for that $46 billion to help them survive without that income. Okay. The moratorium lifts, and then they place it again. It lifts, and then they place it again. What is that doing? Okay. The landlord, the tenants, they have to go through just this labyrinth bureaucracy in order to get some assistance, and then applications sit pending. All of that deliberate to, you know, okay, well, if we extend the moratorium for another two months will knock off more small landlords and because the longer this goes on the worse the situation gets for the landlord for the tenants so this latest <clears throat> unconstitutional moratorium uh, from the CDC another two months is it or what is it, October, to the end of October? I'm not entirely sure what the date is, but, you know, when, te when landlords finally get, okay, the moratorium lifts on Saturday, and I'll begin to get rent in again, and then boom. What happens? The landlords who are in a desperate situation finally fold. So this moratorium is not to help tenants who will eventually be out on the street because the rents are skyrocketing unbelievably and um, they'll have eviction on their record Institutional investors certainly do not uh, rent to anybody with an eviction on their record. So we're looking at a really bad time. Uh, the owners have been waiting for their $46 billion. Oh, well, we did at least get out $3 billion. All right. Um, Institutional investors, broadly defined in the industry as firms owning more than 1,000 units, these bigger players have bulk bought properties. During the pandemic, investors and their advocates say they provide long-term stability to the market at a time of upheaval <laughs> and are trying to fill the gap in rental properties needed by Americans as many small landlords are exiting in financial trouble. Oh, that's why Wall Street's stepping in. Because, well, they care so much about ordinary Americans. They want to keep them in their home. Many housing campaigners have a different take on it. Many housing campaigners say the growing presence of big investors in the market will inevitably mean higher rents and less affordable housing 
available to the type of tenants whose health and incomes have been hit the hardest during the pandemic. 23% of small landlords <clears throat> owning between one and three single family homes plan to sell at least one property due to uh, their financial hit during the pandemic. Um, this could reshape the market. No, it is reshaping the, mar the market. Local landlords provide the bulk of rental properties and affordable homes. During the first half of 2021, 77 billion in institutional money has been poured into the rental home market. 77 billion. First half of 2021, they were buying up properties in 2020. This month, Tricon Residential announced it would be spending $5 billion to buy an additional 18,000 homes together with a Texas pension fund and other large investors. Every day there is a new press release on an existing or new investment group raising billions to buy properties. The big buyers are happy to take these properties off local landlords' hands. Uh, Washington, D.C. affordable housing landlord Arthur Knowles tried for months to hang on to his properties, paying off the mortgages on his two rental buildings with savings, then credit cards, then his retirement fund. About a third of his 47 tenants stopped paying. The 60, he's 66 years old. My gas bills didn't get a deduction. My utilities didn't get a deduction. My property taxes were still due, and I still had to make repairs. Why, why didn't we do a moratorium on the property taxes? Or Because we're getting rid of these landlords. Noll sold his two properties to investors. You can probably, prob probably tell by the tone of his tone of voice that he's just extremely bitter about the whole thing. Devon's Crest Village in Air, Massachusetts, which local realtors say is one of the last affordable residential complexes in the area. Some are now facing displacement, the residents, after the local owner of the property sold to an investment firm this summer. It was all cash. Residents there were told by the firm in July that it plans to make renovations that could raise rents from 900 to 2100 for a two to three bedroom apartment. 900 to 2100. They said residents in about 40 units, all on month to month, that's what landlords are now doing. The one-year lease, the two-year lease, is becoming rare. Month-to-month -month allows a landlord to, well, you're there for a month, and then they don't want to renew your lease, and you're out. No security month-to-month. -month. Um, so the residents in 40 units received notices to vacate by September 30. The firm... Now managing the property, Devon's Crest Management said it was revitalizing a long-neglected neighborhood and investing millions of dollars in repairs and renovations. Devon Crest added uh, that the revamp could not be safely conducted with homes occupied. It said 37 tenants had been given more than 75 days to relocate um, which is over double the amount of time required by law. The building's former owner, Larry Toshi, Tushi Toshi, a local landlord who the residents said charged below market prices. In the past eight years, he's never had a vacancy. He's now worried about the tenants who he knows on a first-name basis. I've been running the place for 41 years, and I really tried to take care of my tenants, there are a lot of good people in there just trying to get by. I know I've sold, and it's no longer my responsibility, but after 41 years, I do feel somewhat responsible. Well, um, 
you know, there's an awful lot of just ordinary Americans who can't buy these rental properties. So, oh, increasing interest of institutional investors has already helped push up both rents and home prices during the pandemic. Rents are up 7%. Uh, home prices rose 16.6%. Even before the pandemic, America was plagued by a lack of affordable homes, defined by the government as one that a household can rent for 30% or less of their income. A quarter of American renters pay more than half their incomes on rent. So the chief executive of the National Apartment Association, a landlord trade group, said small owners were already operating on thin profit margins of about like 10% before the pandemic. Eviction moratoria had not only left renters strapped with insurmountable debt, but have left small owners to unfairly hold the bag. Yeah. So, middle class dying, small landlords dying, uh, tenants, we have more and more who are homeless. You know, so many businesses gone, closed their doors, 70 million jobs gone. You know, you want to listen and believe what you're hearing about how fabulous our economy is. Great, but it's a lie. And, um, you know, We are going fast, nation of renters. The Great Reset, this is part of it. And if you don't know anything about the Great Reset, put in Great Reset in a search bar um, and do some research because the world is being reshaped. And we will all be slaves. Some of us have already gotten there. Uh, there will be no middle class. There will only be, you know, the slave owner and the slave. It's hard. It's hard to look at this, but this is the new normal. BlackRock buying up so many properties. Great reset. They want you to own nothing and be happy. And that includes your home. So... Articles over the net talking about renting over owning. Last month, Bloomberg headlined, America should become a nation of renters. Uh, and in that article, it stated, the very features that made home buying an affordable and stable investment are coming to an end. Atlantic, their article, why it's better to rent than own in March. Uh, financial pages, uh, Business Insider, Forbes, Yahoo, Bloomberg again. Nine ways renting is better than buying or something similar. Other publications go more personal with uh, anecdotal columns about ignoring financial advice and you should refuse to buy your home. Vox, they had a article Home ownership can bring out the worst in you. That's right. Literally arguing that buying a house can make you a bad person. These are all recent articles. It's the biggest thing you might ever buy, and it could turn you into a bad person. Vox. So, what's the narrative here? Greed, control, almost always... That, but, long answer, major investment firms such as Vanguard and BlackRock, Tricon, um, American Homes for Rent, are buying up single-family homes in record numbers, sometimes entire neighborhoods. I've posted on this before, um, but people need to understand what is going on. If the landlord and the tenants understood this, if they understood they are both under attack, 
maybe they could come together and work something out. Um, they pay well over market value, these uh, investment firms. <clears throat> Pricing families who want to own their own those homes out of the market. So, you have an ordinary American coming to make an offer that is a little less than your buying price, right? But then you have the institutional buyer. We'll give you cash, and we'll give you this. We'll give you uh, 10, 15 percent over your asking price. So it forces the housing market up whilst the lockdown created recession is lowering wages and creating millions of newly employed. No, the economy is not doing well. So this, of course, is motivating people to sell their homes. Uh, people all across America have been saddled with houses worth less than they bought them for in 2008 due to the uh, economic crash, and are eager to take the cash from these investment firms, paying 10 to 20% over market value. So combine an economic recession with a created housing boom? Wow. Well, you have a lot of people willing to sell their homes. Many of these sellers don't realize until it's too late that even if they attempt to downsize, move somewhere cheaper, they may be priced out of the market as well. Forced to rent. Forced to rent. As more and more people are forced to rent, of course, rental properties will be higher and higher. The demand higher. Rents skyrocketing. Last year, rent has increased three times faster than the government predicted. Uh, and this problem is likely to get worse? No, it's getting worse. It's definitely getting worse. In fact, I have to move. <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but the best place for me would be right smack back in my old apartment in Anderson, South Carolina. Yeah, I had a lot of problems living there, but after living there for a while, you know, you begin to establish familiarity. People begin to know who you are. You know, you had outlets if you were, you know, needing some kind of uh, social activity. You visited neighbors. You had coffee with them. Even just going into a store and somebody knowing you and saying, Hi, Carol. Okay. I didn't have any of that since 2012. That became exceedingly important. All right, I was tossed out. Um, I went to look at, I can't even rent an apartment because I would need a cosigner. so, but comments that I was receiving under videos and people telling me their rent is going up, 250 a month, 300 a month, or being told that they have to leave uh, even though they've always paid rent. And I'm looking, I lived in this apartment, Tanglewood, in South Carolina. And it was a two bedroom, and I think it was, it was seven, I'll say 750, I can't remember exactly. Okay, their one bedroom now is 908. Three bedroom, it's 3000 Three hundred and eighty-three dollars. Wow. Okay. When I first hit South Carolina, I was absolutely amazed at how cheap the rents were coming from the Northeast. Three thousand three hundred and eighty-three dollars for these apartments. Okay. Um, priced out. Priced out. Priced out. I also. Rain Tree Apartments, call for rent. I bookmarked this page. I looked at it a couple of days ago. Tanglewood Apartments, the range, I think it was 908, but it was 2000 and something. I can't remember. A few days later, now it's 3000. 
this is scary. Um, you know, somebody asked me, well, how are people affording these apartments? They're coming from areas where the apartments are so expensive, like New York or California. Um, they're uh, homeowners who sold their home and can't buy a home, so they're renting. But even this, Anderson Crossing, uh, there were so many who got evicted from the apartment complex I was living in. And one of those who got evicted moved into this apartment complex, moved into a two-bedroom, and I, their rent was not 1125 Their rent was, I believe, somewhere like eight, high 800s. Now it's 1125 So this is going to knock so many people onto the streets. I can't believe this. So, yeah, getting worse, absolutely fast getting worse. All right, so, yeah, accidentally failed to extend the eviction ban, but now it has been. But while senators adjourn or House representatives adjourn for their summer homes, which they probably don't rent, the ban will officially end and a lot of people are likely to have their houses foreclosed or their landlords kick them out. Moratorium, again, landlords, more are going down. The newly empty buildings will be a feeding frenzy for the massive corporate landlords. And you don't want to have a corporate landlord. I'm telling you, I never knew there were corporate landlords until I hit South Carolina. That was... Uh, 2014, and I was amazed. Well, there's more and more of them. So, Wall Street Journal headline, April, if you sell a house these days, the buyer might be a pension fund. And uh, the propaganda now has flipped. You know, journalists used to blame on Wall Street, you know, the, the housing crisis. Now they protect Wall Street. Here, Atlantic, this story in 2019, when Wall Street is your landlord, with help from federal government, institutional investors became major players in the rental market. They promised to return profits to their investors and convenience to their tenants. Investors are happy, tenants are not. Well, what are they, what's the Atlantic saying today? BlackRock is not ruining the U.S. housing market. The real villain isn't a faceless Wall Street Goliath. It's your neighbors and your local governments stopping the construction of new units because the homeowner now is bad. It's the homeowner's fault. It's your fault if you own a home. You are stopping the construction. All right. We are going fast, heading fast, into a whole new, you know, owner, home ownership was the American dream. Well, now we're living the American nightmare. You know, it's, and everything increasing while we have wage stagnation. Everything increasing, wages stay the same. And anybody... And you don't have to have studied uh, economics to understand that wages have been pretty much stagnating for, hell, most of my life, 62 years. But everything has been increasing. And that's deliberate. It's deliberate. For decades, wage increases have lagged behind increases in the cost of living. In the 1960s, one full-time job for one parent was enough to afford a home and 
raising a family of, you know, or a, for a family of four. These days, both parents are working multiple jobs and just to pay the bills. Uh, and we're now a service sector economy. It was huge amounts of financial deregulation which created this situation. So whether you believe Vox's BlackRock apologia or not, one way or another, Wall Street very definitely is to blame. It's not about money. This is about control. It is about control. Every agenda is about control. Climate change, veganism, um, the war on cash, vaccines, lockdowns, masks. Home owning gives people a stake in society. Family-owned house is a source of security for the future and for uh, the children. It also provided sovereignty and privacy. You're independent when you're a homeowner. Renter is not. Well, a whole lot of that has changed, but now everybody's going to the renting side, unless you happen to have a lot of money and uh, you'll be able to ride the wave much longer. So the same reasoning behind the way working people were encouraged to take out loans and become debt slaves. If you limit people's options, if you make them rely on you for a roof over their head, you have control over them. And great article, which this is the hyperlink, your new feudal overlords. We are, we are racing back into feudalism. So, and corporate landlords, you have to agree to all of these conditions. It's, it's not a fun way to live. So, you can read the end of this article. But we are, yeah, maybe we'll go full Black Mirror style corporate dystopia through uh, affiliation programs, mega equity firms who own your rental house, has ties to McDonald's and, well, you cannot eat at any other fast food restaurant. What if they demand that you get vaccinated? Uh, you don't think that that's possible? You think it's crazy that they would demand you observe at least 90 seconds of Disney advertisements per day? You think that's crazy? We live crazy. And these are the type of people who love to make people look like fools. When they have control over them, they love to exercise the control. So don't be surprised. You know, they love to make people miserable. So, super wealthy, they have all the money they could ever need, all the luxury they could ever use, living standards as high as physically possible. That includes all of them in Congress. You know, we're looking at no air travel, travel restrictions, no vacations, no going out at all. Look at what's happening. Uh, vaccine passports. New York City. You know, those who are vaccinated get to live. Those who are not vaccinated don't. Live in a tiny house or a pod. Eat bugs. Get rid of your car. Uh, rent your clothes or your furniture. Pay taxes on sugar, alcohol, red meat. Don't eat any red meat. Eat your bugs. They have been very clear. The direction these elite are taking us has been clear. They've, you know, the World Economic Forum posts the Great Reset the Internet of Things, all these short, snappy videos. One of which, yeah, starts with, 
You will own nothing, and you'll be happy. You won't own a house, and you'll be happy. Or else that mega corporation you're forced to rent from will kick you out. You better look happy, act happy, always obey, always comply. It's going to be fun. Well, it is really too bad. So many Americans don't know what the hell is going on. What they would do with this knowledge, I don't know. Hopefully they would care. Hopefully they would begin to unite. But Americans are not quite right. So those who have don't care. Don't care about what happens to those who don't. So we're going down fast. The links are below.